Dr. McLaughlin is consulted to the ER for a shunt malfunction, and he's going to go over his thoughts on his walk to the ER. So when I'm thinking about a shunt malfunction, the um, best way to think about it, I think, is a who, what, when, where, why. So, so first of all, who, you know, who placed the shunt? Um, because that'll tell you whether it's done in a pediatric hospital or an adult hospital, maybe give you some information about it. Um, what was the shunt placed for? Was it placed for um, hydrocephalus at birth, which means the shunt is like a major lifeline for this person and they absolutely need it to get uh, checked out carefully? Or was it placed for normal pressure hydrocephalus where it's not necessarily as severe of a condition in terms of a malfunction? When was the shunt placed? How long ago? Because if the shunt was placed in the last six months, the chances are that it could be infected or more likely obstructed, as opposed to if it was placed many, many years ago. So the timeline is important. If the timeline is uh, long, then it's still possible it may be obstructed, but it's not going to be infected. So the next one would be where was it placed? So is it a ventricular peritoneal shunt? That would be something that's in the abdomen, or is it a ventricular atrial shunt, something that's going into the, the atrium? And then why? Most important, why? Was it placed for post hemorrhagic hydrocephalus? Was it placed for normal pressure hydrocephalus? Was it placed for um, uh, tumor, uh, post-tumor hydrocephalus? All those things are very important because it tells you how critical that shunt is. Once I've gone through my who, what, when, where, why, I want to make sure that as I said before, we have previous studies where, where we can find and compare the ventricular size. Whenever you get a call about that, always ask for the patient to be made NPO until you evaluate them in case they possibly need to go to the operating room. And then make sure that they're on a monitor, um, critical to be watching their heart rate and their blood pressure because um, if they have a shunt malfunction, that may be a major issue. So I just have a few questions for Dr. McLaughlin. The first is, what is NPO when you say that? That means nothing in my mouth. That means that they can't you know, eat, eat or drink anything in case they need to go to the OR because if they undergo anesthesia and they've had food in their stomach, then they aspirate and that could cause an aspiration pneumonia, which is a very dangerous situation. And what are normal intracranial pressures? Generally about five to 10 centimeters of water uh, is a normal pressure. If we do a lumbar puncture or we put an intracranial pressure on there.